Okay, hi there, welcome. I'm back with another short video looking at some key diagrams, some diagrams which will really help get top analysis marks and help the evaluation in your IB and A-level economics papers. Let's spend a few minutes together thinking about the impact of a maximum price on economic welfare. So let's consider a market that initially is in equilibrium at quantity Q1 and the price is P1. I'll put some letters on here. I like putting letters on diagrams. And don't forget, label diagrams. Don't shade them in the exam. So our market is initially in equilibrium. And at that free market equilibrium price, that means the price without any government intervention, consumer surplus equals area AB P1. That's the area below the demand curve and above the price. Producer surplus is the area above the supply curve and below the price, and that equals area P1, B, C. Okay, so that's the area of producer and consumer surplus before the maximum price. Now, to be effective, to have an impact on the market, a maximum price or a price ceiling, it must be set below the free market price. And of course, the lower you set it, the greater the potential impact is. So I've drawn in there a price ceiling that lies quite a little distance below the free market price P1. OK, now Ketra's paribus, what other things remaining the same? This creates a disequilibrium in the market with a situation of excess demand at the price cap. So what happens if you put a price ceiling in is that more people want to buy the product uh, because it's cheaper and therefore you get an expansion along the demand curve. Demand expands to Q2, but there's less incentive for the, produ the producer, the supplier, the grower uh, to, uh, to produce at that low price. Uh, so therefore supply contracts down the supply curve from Q1 to Q3. Let me just add a few more letters in here to help me. <laughs> I've actually now just called the maximum price point E. So therefore, at that maximum price, we now have excess demand in the market. There's a shortage created by the maximum price. Let's think about what the consequences are for consumer surplus. I've, the key quantity here is Q3. So welfare depends on the quantity actually consumed. It was Q1 before the maximum price. It's now fallen to Q3. So that's the really key output. And I've just driven up to the, to the demand curve at point F because that's going to be important. So consumer surplus before the price cap was area A, B, P1. OK, now after the price cap, well, if the price falls from P1 to E, so that increases consumer surplus. But of course, the quantity goes down from Q1 to Q3, which decreases consumer surplus. So the, at the maximum price, the new area of consumer surplus changes to area A, F, D, E. Just checking through, everything OK? Now, that is because output is restricted to Q3. So there was that little triangle to the right of it below the demand curve. You can't have consumer surplus if uh, the, the good or the service is not consumed. What about producers? Well, producer surplus before the price cap was area P1, B, C, the area above the supply curve and below the price. A maximum price, however, reduces producer surplus since price is lowered and, as we've seen, output is restricted from Q1 to Q3. So the new producer surplus is area E, D, C. And that is uh, definitely lower than it was before. And that's the quite important point, actually, that price caps do have a negative effect on the revenues and the profits of producers. So a maximum price creates a disequilibrium in the market. And it also causes a deadweight loss of welfare. Let's just finish with this point. So the deadweight loss of welfare is the loss of producer and consumer surplus that was there before at price P1, output Q1, but it's no longer there because the output's been restricted. Can you work out the area? The deadweight loss is shown by the area F, B, D. And there is your welfare loss. Essentially, uh, the market is no longer allocatively efficient. And there we go. There's your diagram. You might want to take a screenshot or just play the video again just to make sure you've got great notes on this topic. Now, maximum prices are, as a form of intervention by governments, are becoming more common. A good example is the energy price cap in the UK. There are lots of other examples. The cap on the interest charges of payday lenders, for example. Uh, rent controls being considered in various places. 
A price cap is probably best analysed, if you think about the energy price market, probably best analysed using cost and revenue curves, because uh, you can show a profit more, a little bit more easily, but you can use supply and demand diagrams. Now, discussing the impact on different economic agents, consumers, producers, governments and so on, is a good way of scoring high analysis marks. But please also consider possible second round effects. So if this is a very tight, low price cap, uh, what happens to supply if producers decide to leave the market? Not just cut back on production, but leave the market as a result of a stringent price cap. What happens, for example, if landlords, uh, instead of just taking some of their houses off the market because of a price cap, decide to effectively move out of the market completely. That's when you can really start to develop your diagrams. Well, hopefully this was a useful short video on maximum prices and economic welfare. Thank you. Take care and see you soon.